If you're a 2D game developer, a large portion of your game content comes from textures. And in a world with harsh data caps, devices with low memory, and impatient users, you can't afford to have a game with bloated content. My name is Colt McCandless, and with a new texture format, you can reduce your game's texture footprint, reduce download sizes, and improve load times, which is a good thing. I mean, think about it. In a free-to-play market, it's all about user acquisition. You want to be able to minimize the cycle between a user seeing an ad for your game, installing it, playing it, and becoming a paying user. But having a 10 minute download pause in the middle of that cycle hurts your user acquisition rates and just frustrates users. For 2D games, flipbook animations tend to comprise the bulk of the texture footprint. Uh, usually an artist will create a frame of each animation as a separate file and then pack them into a single texture atlas to optimize for loading and rendering performance. But these flipbook animations tend to be using more memory than they actually need to. Firstly, there tends to be lots of duplicate pixels between the frames of animation. Uh, that is, most of the frame is visually identical to the last frame, with only a small portion of it actually animating and changing between subsequent frames. And secondly, there tends to be lots of wasted space once your frames get packed into a single texture atlas. Uh, this is mostly due to the fact that your frames have transparency, and when placed side by side, this data creates loss of wasted pixels. Rather than a large texture atlas, you really want some format to reduce the texture footprint for these animated textures. Now, there are traditional formats for these sorts of things out there, right? Like uh, GIF, H.264, and WebM. But sadly, these are unusable for games. See, all of these texture formats require a per frame CPU decompression step coupled with a GPU upload step to get them to the screen. You effectively have to decompress each frame to CPU memory and then upload it to the GPU, which is anything but performant. While these formats help with distribution sizes, the savings stop there. What we really want instead is a format that provides compression but doesn't need the CPU decompression step. Rather, we can use it on the GPU in its direct compressed form. To address this problem, we've released an open source texture format called Krabby that focuses on flipbook compression alongside GPU reconstruction. The compression in Krabby comes from removing blocks of duplicate pixels in your image. Uh, see, for a given frame of your animation, we subdivide the image into four by four blocks of pixels and then do an exhaustive search to identify blocks which are identical to each other. All of the unique pixel blocks are kept in a texture in their 32-bit per pixel format. We replace the blocks in the image with an index into the unique block. Uh, for example, all of the white blocks that are duplicates will share the same texture index. The process is then duplicated for each frame of your animation, where you can share blocks between frames, all adding up to output the final textures. Now, when compared with a standard PNG file, Krabby provides significant compression improvement for distribution sizes, CPU residency, and most importantly, GPU residency of your textures. Now, it's worth pointing out that Krabby's compression mode is lossless, meaning there's no visual artifacts that are added to your image for the sake of compression. But if you're interested in trading off visual quality for additional compression savings, you could pass the pixel block texture off to WebP or one of the many awesome GPU formats out there. To render your animations at runtime, Krabby uses a special shader to reconstruct any single frame of your animation on demand on the GPU. It works like this. We use a standard UVs of a rendered quad to sample the block index's texture, which gives us an index into our list of unique pixel blocks. We then fetch that block with a second sample from the pixel block's texture, giving us the pixels that we'll use to reconstruct your final frame. And the best part is that this is all done on the GPU on demand without having to first do an intermediate decompression step on the CPU. To test performance of this heavier than normal shader, I set up three devices and ran the Krabby demos in full screen mode. That is, 100% of the screen was covered with pixels being decompressed by this process, which would be the worst possible case scenario for a typical game. The Nexus 5 performed the best with this test, but you can see that the Galaxy Nexus and the Nexus 7 hardware had some performance overhead for Krabby. This is mainly due to the tiling architecture that those devices use. Krabby's double sample setup can create a performance issue on these types of tile-based GPU chips. The Krabby codec is available in alpha mode, which is, and it's available on GitHub for you to try out and break. You'll find the client-side implementations for OpenGL on Windows, Android, and WebGL. Take a look at it and file some bugs. Decreasing the texture footprint size is the biggest step you can take to making your game easier to download and install, so users can get back to what they really love most, killing zombies. Thanks for watching.